Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mahesh Shah once again with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve problem sums based on the chapter Investment Accounting under the subject Financial Accounting for all the TYBMS M5 students. Okay, now uh, in this video, we are going to take up a basic sum just to understand, you know, what is investment account, what is the format, some rules and how you can solve a basic problem sum, okay, very basic problem sum just to understand the posting of investment account okay so let us start now before starting we'll first note down the format and some rules we'll just note it down and thereafter we'll see uh, you know how to solve one simple problem sum okay now this is the format and some rules investment account in dash okay dash meaning whatever you're going to invest in it can be debentures bonds uh, uh, government bonds and any kind of securities and due date very important date particular working note nv that is nominal value interest capital again date particular working note nv interest and capital some rules number one for come interest that is cumulative interest subtract the interest from capital value for x interest don't do anything and for finding the interest ask only one question when was the interest last paid okay and we have one working note where we will find units nv capital and interest okay so this is the format of your sum and some rules that we are going to take up now in the very first problem sum uh we are just going to have you know solve some which has neither of come interest nor of x interest okay? so we are going to solve one very basic simple sum just to understand the posting in your investment account okay so let us start with the solving part on 1st jan 1999 X Limited bought 100 12% government bond of 1000 each at Rs 940 each on 1st August 1999 X Limited sold 50 12% government bond okay those are debentures they are government bonds only at Rs 980 each interest is paid half yearly on 30th June and 31st December every year Prepare 12% government bond account assuming that the market price for the same is 990 per bond. Okay. Now, this is uh, the value which has been given to us. Okay. The question again. So, now what we do here is firstly note down the format. Investment account in 12% government bond. Due date is 30th June and 31st December. These are the two dates on which the interest can be payable. Okay. First, we will always start with first in on 1st Jan 1999. So this is Jan to December type sum. Okay, because the year ending the 31st December. Now, always remember, we will first start with the, you know, in the order, in the chronological order. The, on 1st Jan, they bought something. You bought, okay, the moment you buy, it is debit. The moment you sell, it will be credit. Okay, so debit and credit goes this way. So working note number one, units, you are buying... You know, we are buying 100 debentures, a so number of units, uh, 100 bonds, so number of units is 100. Nominal value will be their government bond of 1000 each. So, one bond costs 1000 rupees, so we have 100. So, 100 into 1000 is 1 lakh, so our nominal value is 1 lakh. Nominal value is nothing but face value, okay, kind of face value. And you are buying it at 940 each. So my capital value will be we have 100 units and we are buying it at 940 each. So 100 into 940 which will become 94,000. Now for calculating interest, again remember very carefully. First of all, interest is always calculated on nominal value. So on 1 lakh we will be calculating interest. Interest is at 12% because it's 12% government bond. You only have to ask one question. When was the interest last paid? If we are in the month of Jan, the due date of our interest was 31st December. So from 31st December to 1st Jan, there is no gap. Okay, basically there is no month in between. There is no gap of a month in between. So interest cannot be paid on this particular entry. So my calculation will be 1 lakh into 12% into 0 because we don't have months. Suppose if there would have been even one month ka gap, then it would have become into 1 divided by 12. And we would be able to find the value of interest. However, in this, there is no interest available. So, interest is zero. So, now let us see how we have to note it down in our account. Date, 1st Jan 1999. Particulars made to bank account. Working note number one. Nominal value was 1 lakh. Interest is zero. And capital was 94,000. 
as simple first do the working note then just do the posting okay so with that our first entry is done next on first august 1999 you are selling now august now look at the due date august comes after 30th june so our due date is before so first we will have to do the working for our due date so we will note down our working note number 2 due date meaning on this date you are only eligible to get interest on whatever you have so we just have to calculate the interest on whatever we have now we have 1 lakh ka uh, government bond so only on 1 lakh we have to calculate interest at 12% and when was the interest last paid if we are in the month of june last interest was paid in december so jan feb march april may june six months ka gap is there in between so 1 lakh into 12% into 6 divided by 12 we get the interest value as 6000 this 6000 we are going to post here on 30th june 1999 by bank uh, this is supposed to be by bank account okay by bank account working note number 2 there will only be interest of 6000 rupees okay so we are done with the opening entry we are done with the first due date now comes the next on first 8 1999 you are selling okay the moment we sell okay the moment we are going to sell again we have to start with the working note working note number 3 unit you are going to sell 50 units the nominal value was 1000 rupees each so 15 to 1000 is 50000 got bond but you are selling it at 980 each so my capital will become 50 into 980 which comes to 4900 now again we need to calculate the interest so interest is on nominal value which is 50000 rate is 12% interest ka period will be when was the interest last paid interest is last paid on 30th june this is august first august so there is exactly one month ka gap So fifty thousand into twelve percent into one divided by twelve, our interest will come to five hundred. The moment we got our interest, we'll start with posting side. It's on the buy side, so it'll be first August. Buy bank account. It's not two. Okay, it is buy bank. Working note number three. Nominal value fifty thousand. Interest is five hundred and capital is forty nine thousand. Now. this is the most important thing that you will need to remember while selling the moment you sell we will have to find whether you have earned a profit or loss for finding that we need to first find the total cost so there is a formula working note number 4 cost ka formula is nv of sale upon total nv that is debit side ka nv minus the credit side ka nv into total capital that is again debit minus credit okay so now nv of sale whatever you are selling uska nv is 50000 The moment I take this, now you do not consider this. Okay, I hide this particular line now. What is the total NV? It is one lakh, and on the credit side there is nothing. So total one lakh. Again, capital ninety four thousand minus. There is nothing. The one which you are selling, you cannot consider that. Okay, so you don't consider that. So what we get here is NV of sale was fifty thousand upon total NV, which is one lakh, into total capital, which is ninety four thousand. So 50 divided by 1 lakh into 94,000, we get the value as 47,000. So our cost is 47,000. Our selling price was 49,000. So we have sold it at a profit. So my profit will be 49 minus 47, which comes to 2,000 rupees. So this 2,000 I need to post okay, on the debit side. If it is a profit, debit. If it is a loss, credit. Okay. So on the same date, 1899, 2 PNL account, working note number four, we got a profit of rupees 2,000. okay so with this the sale ka entry is done after that we read interest is paid half yearly we have already recorded that december prepare 12% government bond account that's it assuming the market price they given you some market price so that by closing now we'll have to check so there's nothing else remaining so we'll start with the tally part now now remember the tally part first you have to always tally your nv ka account so there's only one nv or one lakh okay so i'll write a 31st december because you are ending by balance We tally the NV part. NV is one lakh, one lakh on both the side. One lakh minus fifty thousand, so we will get a balance of fifty thousand. Okay. Now the moment we got fifty thousand ka balance, we need to now find the interest because it's a due date also. So working note number five. Interest fifty thousand into twelve percent 
when was interest last paid? It was paid in June. So June to December, exactly six months. So fifty thousand into twelve months, uh, into twelve percent into six divided by twelve comes to three thousand. So interest is three thousand. Now comes the most important part, capital. When we now we'll tally the capital. So ninety four plus two is ninety six. So ninety six on both the side. Ninety six minus forty nine thousand. We get a difference of forty seven thousand. That's my like my cost price. But they are giving you market price is ninety nine. Nine hundred and ninety. So let us first find the market price. Fifty thousand rupees ka NV meaning if you cut thousand, so I have fifty shares pending. So market price will be fifty into nine ninety because it was given, which comes to forty nine thousand five hundred. And the cost price that is the tally part. We got the value as forty seven thousand. Now the rule is closing stock needs to be valued at cost or market price whichever is less. So from forty nine five hundred and forty seven thousand, forty seven is the lowest value. So we will note down forty seven. Last, if we just tally the interest part, interest buy side will always be greater than six three nine nine thousand five hundred on both the side. The difference will be known as on thirty first December ninety nine two P N L amount comes to nine thousand five hundred. Okay. So with this, we were able to complete the entire sum, which was a basic sum based on investment account. Okay, if you all have understood this, then you all can solve any kind of sum based on investment account. Okay, basically this this is the base. Once you understand the base, after that all the advanced sum, which will be you know what we'll be taking up will be easily understood. Okay, so I hope everyone have understood this. With that, we will be ending this video here. Thank you.